All right, let's take you to Beirut, where Osama Hamdan is giving a press conference. Let's listen in, senior member of Hamas. The Nazi bombardment and medical and ambulance and civil defense staff are denied access to these trad people in a series, in a series of war crimes before the eyes of the entire world. This, these new Nazis over the past 22 hours, they have committed heinous crimes using American ammunition and weapons by which entire families have been annihilated. All of them are displaced and civilian people. Such massacres were committed in Beit Lahia, Al Magazi, Al Bridge, and Khan Yunis across all the Gaza Strip from the north to the south. And through such massacres, 300 people had been killed and 400 were injured. While committing these crimes, uh, they commit them with purpose and deliberate crimes. Uh, such a crimes are not limited to the criminal, political, and military leaders, but, but it goes beyond these leaders to include um, uh, soldiers on the ground. And this, is, and this is a soldier on the ground who confesses to killing a 12-year-old girl, and he says that he's looking for an infant to kill. And this is the soldier. The world has believed lies perpetrated and propaganda propagated by the occupation on the 7th of October when they untruthfully claimed that children have been beheaded and women have been raped. And despite the fact that the world has called such lies, however, they never stand uh, again, before a crime committed by the leaders of this entity and their soldiers on equal par. The occupation has kidnapped and stolen 80 dead bodies of martyrs who have been killed from various areas in the Gaza Strip after they have exhumed graves and dead bodies and they have stolen body parts of the killed people and the Red Cross. The Red, the Red Cross has transported these dead bodies without making any statement as if nothing has happened. We call upon the Red Cross to make a clear clarification. How could they receive such dead bodies without any information about the identity of these dead bodies? How were they killed? And what happened to them as if the Red Cross seems to be abetting in this crime, this heinous crime calls for an international condemnation criminalizing such act and to call and we are calling for um, immediate investigation to hold its perpetrators accountable this leads me to talk about another important point which is starvation until death in the northern part of gaza and here i'm talking literally with the scarcity of material and its access to Gaza, including food items and medical supplies. What is happening in the northern parts of Gaza is a truly a humanitarian catastrophe as our people there are facing starvation, which started to ensue. This matter has now reached to a stage where many people are dying because of starvation, including women, children, and elderly citizens. Also, the acute shortage of food items and medicine has started the spread of skin diseases and respiratory issues 
among the healthy, fragile groups, including young children. In the northern part of Gaza, those who have been killed by bombard bombardment are dying because of trans starvation and bleeding to death. Such a fact requires an immediate and urgent action on the part of the free of the world Arab nations and Muslim nations as well as international organizations to deliver aid, food items and medical supplies to Gaza. The entire Gaza Strip is now um, so is considered a um, disaster zone and many lives are being reaped by these conditions. On the ground, our brave resistance is managing this epic battle, defending our people in Gaza and taking revenge for the blood of those who have been killed by the Israelis and in support of the of Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa Mosque. As for the Nazi occupation, the three leaders, Netanyahu, Ganetz and Gallant, this trio, and for three months they have been marketing their transition across phases propagating the delusion that they are achieving a victory that doesn't exist uh, and they are accumulating a failure after failure with the announcement of every new phase they announce and this trio of evil are unable to announce going through the next stage because they know its consequences this this aggression have written the fate of their political leadership uh, and they have written the last pages of their continued existence on the land of Palestine. Netanyahu and his criminal government were reaped only failure and the victory that they are dreaming of and the elimination of Hamas that they dream of is mere dreams and it's a marriage that would disappear before the steadfastness of our people and the brave um, resistance that the criminal leaders of the occupation will not see their captives alive except with a complete and full seize of aggression activities against our people through negotiations that is aligned with our people's interest. I repeat, uh, the leaders of the criminal occupation will never see their captives alive without a complete and full seize of the aggression against our people in Gaza through negotiations that is aligned with the interest of our people and if Netanyahu claims to liberate their captives through military pressure, we ask him the question, have you liberated or freed any a captive without submitting to the conditions of the resistance, we would like to say to the families with whom he met recently, we tell you that Netanyahu is lying to you. With military action, your sons and daughters will return dead in caskets or might not return at all. However, responding to the opportunities we offer, by offered by the resistance, there they will stand a chance of going back home alive. Despite the aggression in Gaza seems to be um, systematic and extends beyond Gaza to include the West Bank through arbitrary killings and assassinations with barbaric invasions and incursions destroying infrastructure and targeting the popular base of the resistance and protecting those extremists who continue their desecration of the holy mosque. 
Since the 7th of October, 313 people in, in the West Bank have been killed and more than 3,000 have been injured and more than 5,000 have been arrested in the West Bank since such aggression has started. And this enemy continues to practice there is aggression against our sacred sites and denies our people's access to the Holy Mosque. These crimes of the occupation is a continuation of this Nazi government's plots and plans for, for continuing or existing since many years in the West Bank and Gaza and Jerusalem. They will never break, break our steadfastness of our people and will never impose a de facto situation in the West Bank or in the Aqsa Mosque, no matter how hard the aggression is. We call upon the, our people and our our revolting youth to escalate all sorts of struggle and standing standing in the face of the occupation's aggression and engage with them by all means and we call upon people to march towards Al-Aqsa Mosque tomorrow Friday and here we call upon personnel of security apparatus in the West Bank to break the shackles and to direct their rifles against, against the soldiers of the occupation and join their brothers of resistance in the West Bank, defending the people, the land, and the sacred sites. With regards to political initiatives and proposals that are under discussion, we would like to confirm the following that um, Hamas is open to any proposals or initiatives that would lead to a complete ceasefire against our people in Gaza. Our people, we don't want a partial ceasefire, but rather a complete ceasefire. And would like to confirm that the management and administration of the Palestinian people is a Palestinian national domestic matter to be decided by the Palestinian people themselves. And we don't want the leadership of our people to come on American or Israeli tanks. Our people, they want a national leadership that would carry the liberation quest. And the resistance aims, aims to achieve its national aims, including armed resistance. We would like to appreciate the statements made by the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, in which he expressed the need to alleviate the oppression the Palestinian people have been suffering for generations. This confirms the need for an international will to uplift oppression on our people and enable our people to establish their independent state with Jerusalem as its capital and the return of refugees to their homeland. We would like also to confirm that the Biden administration is truly leading this aggressive war, being partner with this um, occupation in their crimes in blatant violation of all international conventions and laws. The American administration is fully responsible for all these innocent souls and lives that have been taken, although they pretend, pretend to be careful about the lives of civilians. The continued attack by all the leadership of the occupation and their attack on the United Nations organizations because, because of the resolutions undertaken that condemn the crimes of the occupation. This occupation regard themselves as above everyone and above the international law. And here we ask the question that everyone needs to answer. Until when? Until when this entity continues to enjoy impunity? 
it, it has become imperative that more strict positions and stances need to be undertaken against this government that regard themselves above accountability. And here I would like to point out uh, that the propaganda and misleading campaigns as to the, as the statements of our leadership that our opponents are perpetrating, perpetrating through media. Particular media will not be successful in smearing our principles and our steadfastness. We, we call upon forming an international front that brings together all countries that are denouncing the actions of the occupation in Gaza to exert pressure on the American administration to call for an immediate ceasefire and opening all corridors, allowing access to all sorts of aid, including fuel, gas, uh, food items and medical supplies to all parts of Gaza without exception and to deny the American administration of exercising their veto right. Finally, I would like to call upon the peoples of our Arab Muslim and the free of the world to intensify their movements, especially tomorrow, Friday and Saturday and Sunday coinciding with the new year, with the advent of 2024, to stand in solidarity with Gaza and Palestine. Uh, and the final few days of this year should become an international humanitarian shout, demanding an immediate cease a fire and the genocide committed against our people in Gaza, and to condemn the support of the Biden administration to this Nazi occupation and its full partnership in their crimes. Glory to our fighters, and we pray for a soon recovery of our injured and freedom to our prisoners, uh, our fighters. It is a jihad, victory, or martyrdom, and thank you. They'll never break the steadfastness of our nation. The words there of Osama Hamdan, senior member of Hamas, he went on to address Israelis, saying they'll never see their captives alive without a complete cessation of attacks on Gaza. He addressed the Israeli prime minister, saying the victory Netanyahu is dreaming of concerning a victory and elimination of Hamas is just a mere dream.